Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, our gospel today speaks of the love of Jesus present in marriage and in the family. In this Eucharistic celebration, let us pray for all families and marriages, especially those who are undergoing crises as, at this time, so that Jesus may teach them love and strength in times of distress. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance 
which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations. Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, By origin and birth you are of the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut. You were neither washed with water nor anointed, nor were you robbed with salt, nor swathed in swaddling clothes. No one looked on you with pity or compassion to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out on the ground as something loathsome the day you were born. Then I passed by and saw you weltering in your blood. I said to you, Live in your blood and grow like a plant in the field. You grew and developed. You came to the age of puberty. Your breasts were formed. Your hair had grown. But you were still stark naked. Again I passed by you and saw that you were now old enough for love. So I spread the corner of my cloak over you to cover your nakedness. I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. You became mine, says the Lord God. Then I bathed you with water, washed away your blood, and anointed you with oil. I clothed you with an embroidered gown, put sandals of fine leather on your feet. I gave you a fine linen sash and silk robes to wear. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms, a necklace about your neck, a ring in your nose, pendants in your ears, and a glorious diaben upon your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver. Your garments were of fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth. Fine flour, honey, and oil were your food. You were exceedingly beautiful with the dignity of a queen. You were renowned among the nations for your beauty, perfect as it was, because of my splendor which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord God. But you were captivated by your, by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot, and you lavished your hollow tree on every passerby whose own you became. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl, and I will set up an everlasting covenant with you, that you may remember and be covered with confusion, and that you may utterly silence for shame when I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have turned from your anger. You have turned from your anger. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You have turned from your anger. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim His name. Among the nations, make known His deeds. 
proclaim how exalted his name. You have turned from your anger. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great is your midst, is the Holy One of Israel. You have turned from your anger. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Receive the word of God, not as the word of man, but as it truly is. The Word of God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? For any cause whatever. He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, our Gospel passage today present to us one of the very few times that the Pharisees and Jesus talked about marriage. But Jesus was surprised because the concern of the Pharisees was not really marriage, but divorce. And so Jesus was trying to tell them, why focus on divorce? 
why not strengthen marriage? That is why the answer of Jesus to them was not really about divorce, but about the reality and meaning of marriage. I think, my dear brothers and sisters, most of the time, this is also our situation. We are focusing so much on divorce and we have exerted less effort in strengthening marriages. Maybe let us ask ourselves this question. Aside from focusing on dissolution of marriages, why don't we exert more effort in preparing couples for their marriage? In helping young men and women to choose for their marriage in accompanying them through the journey of married life and exerting more effort in saving rather than destroying marriages. Baka ang laki ng ginagastos natin ang daming oras ginugugol para gumawa ng batas ng divorce. Pero ilan ba sa atin ang gumugugol ng oras para bigyan ng panahon na ihanda ang mga ikakasal para sa buhay mag-asawa? Alam niyo po kaming mga pari, minsan nagkukwentuhan kami. Do you know that it takes us at least 10 years to become a priest. Sabi namin, sampung taon ang ginugugol para ihanda ang isang pari sa buhay ng isang pari na walang asawa. 10 years of training. Hindi ko po alam kung sinong mga kinasal na rito. Gaano po katagal lang inyong marriage seminar? Minsan half day. Sabi namin, mas mahirap nga yata ang buhay mag-asawa, pero half day lang ang preparation nila for married life. Samantalang tayo, sampung taon. No? We have exerted so much effort on divorce and separation, but we have exerted less time, less effort in preparing people, preparing people and couples for married life. In our first reading today from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, we see this kind of love from God. God said to Israel, ever since you were born, ever since you were a little girl, I was already with you. I was already preparing you. so that you would grow up to be a good woman. But even if you have failed, I was still there trying to save you from your failure. That is the love of God to Israel. From birth until she grew up, God was preparing her and journeying with her. I hope the church, the society, the community would learn this, that we would learn to exert more effort in preparing people for marriage, in trying to accompany them in married life, and even trying to save their marriages. How many parishes have a center where couples can go when they are in crisis. Siguro po merong mga mag-asawa dito na nagkaroon din ng problema sa buhay mag-asawa. Meron po ba kayong nakausap sa simbahan para matulungan kayo sa problema ninyo sa buhay mag-asawa? Meron ba tayong nalalapitan 
na kapag may pinagdaraanan ng mag-asawa, makakatulong ang simbahan, makakatulong ang pamayanan. Bihira po. Madalas ang mayroon ng simbahan o ang pamayanan o ang pamakalaan ay paghihiwalay na agad. Sana matuto tayo sa turo ni Jesus ngayon. Huwag lamang nakatuon sa paghihiwalay, lalo sana tayong nakatuon sa paghahanda, sa pagbibigay ng ating kalinga at higit sa lahat sa paggabay sa buhay mag-asawa. In this celebration of the Mass, let us continue to pray first for people who are preparing for marriage. And let us also pray for married couples, especially who are undergoing crises. May our Lord God let them feel His accompanying grace in the journey of married life. Amen. Please stand. Husbands and wives share in God's creation of new life. Our intercessions today center around the needs of parents and children. For every petition, let us say, Fill our homes with your love, Lord. Fill our homes with your love, O Lord that the Church may effectively teach its members the true dignity of marriage and help couples to stay together in their sacred calling, let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill our, our homes with, with your, your love, love, O Lord. Lord. That government leaders and legislators may enact laws and policies that build families rather than destroy them, let us pray to the Lord. Fill our homes with your love, O Lord. That families broken by divorce or separation may find support and understanding from people in their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill our homes with your love, O Lord. That those experiencing difficulties in their marriage may receive the grace to persevere in their commitments. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill our homes with your love, O Lord. That deceased relatives and friends may have the joy and peace in God's eternal home. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill our homes with your love, O Lord. God of love, you created us male and female to continue your work of creation. May our love for one another reflect your indwelling presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your Church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not, not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
please stand. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.